Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Different Stages Radio. I'm your host, JJ, broadcasting from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And I'm pretty excited today to bring to you somebody really cool. You know him from Opeth and Spiritual Beggars and Kamchatka. You also know him guesting with Arch Enemy, Candlemass, Clutch Bakerton Group, Carcass, Keeps More. He has a brand new solo album coming out on March 15th called The Serpents Here. My guest today, Herr Weberg. How are you? I'm very good, thank you, and thanks for having me. And I appreciate you making the time. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about the new record. Um, thanks to um, Purple Sage PR, because it was them that were courteous enough to keep me in the loop of what was going on in your land. Because I'll admit, I'm late to the to the pair party, if you want to call it that, as far as diving into your solo catalog. And after hearing those first two singles, um, were, uh, Dead Sky Lullaby and Follow the Unknown, blown away. I don't want to wreck the record, but um, I did get a copy of it from Purple Sage, so I keep it to myself because, you know, got to have some things in the vault these days. But yeah, I'm blown away. Like, it's jumped the queue of things that I'm listening to, and I'm I'm going to blame you right now for that. So thank you. <laughs> Okay, thanks so much. Well, yeah, please talk about the new record and, and what's going on with The Serpents here. Uh, it's a record that I started to record during the pandemic. So it's it's one of those that's been, you know, I worked on in, in different periods when I felt inspired. And, and um, it wasn't, it's it, it was done actually in the fall of 2022 so it's been it's been a while since i mean it's finally being released now in march which is super nice and i'm excited uh, about that because it's of of all the albums i've i've been on i think it's it's the one that i've waited the longest for so to speak to be to be released and uh but it's all good. It's it's coming out now, so I'm I'm really happy about that. And is it now maybe sounding a bit dated to you, or a bit old now that you're hearing that it's been kind of looming around for a couple of years? I don't know. Um, I'm I'm not a very years? yeah yeah I'm not a very nostalgic person when it comes to stuff that I've played on myself. Uh, I'm I'm usually listening a lot to things when I'm working on it and and you know when you work on the mix and everything and then I usually leave things and move on with with new things this is different though because uh, I can't remember when the original release date was set but it's been pushed back and pushed back and then you kind of come back to it when it you know, if, if someone tells you it, it's going to be out then and then, and then it's like, okay, I better listen to this, what what, what was going on here. But I think I'm, I'm, I'm very much, um, I, I'm not bored with it. I'm, I'm happy with it. And, uh, and it's, it's one of the albums that I'm most proud of, I would say, that I've been, been a part of or made since, since I started. Well, it's just brilliant because as soon as I had it, that's when I had to go back to your back catalog and got, had to get that yeah, through, yeah. through your um, band camp immediately because it's like, I need more stuff. Um, but then I saw the the EP is, is it out of print or just no longer available through yourself? Uh, it's, uh, it's we all out know, of print. We all, it, it, all, um, all is well in the land? Uh, all is well, yeah. Yeah, is that still available or only digitally? Only digitally. Uh, any yeah. any so, thoughts of doing a repress or? I would love to. Um, if I would make all the decisions, I would love to do a CD version of it. And nice. Since the new one, the physical format for the new one is also only going to be on vinyl. So, um. As far as I'm concerned, it could be maybe a good thing to put those two together on a on a CD pack. You know, that will work for me. So, yeah. And will the serpents here be available as well through your Bandcamp, like the previous records, or just through the label directly? Despots is it? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, 
Uh, it, it'll be uh, uh, there will be some vinyl uh, available in my web store, but also through the the Spots Records Bandcamp and and so on. So I mean, it's as long as it's digital, it, it'll be easy to get your hands on it. Okay, because that, that's the thing. It, se it seems, especially people perhaps in North America are concerned, it might be a bit of a challenge to get. So just want to make sure that we can send yeah. people in the right direction to support the physical product as much as possible, because I think we both appreciate the value of physical product. Definitely, absolutely. Yeah. So. so I wanted to ask you a bit about the writing process of not just The Serpents here, but your previous solo albums. Are these albums that you... Are all the ideas primarily through yourself? Is it a collaborative effort? Are you primarily the one playing every, like for example, with the Serpents here, is is it other, do you have other guests on it? Is it just yourself? Because some of that bass playing I find is just crazy. So I'm thinking it's you, but maybe it's not you. Uh, this this um, uh, album is uh, me, we, we recorded the, the basic tracks, drums and bass uh, in a studio live. And it was me and two other guys. And and the writing process for, for this album was basically uh, opposite of how I did the first two uh, releases. The first two releases, I record recorded everything and we added drums last. I'm a useless drummer, so I need to ask someone who, who with some skills to to play drums and fortunately i, I got some good friends who was very um, amazing drummers so so then uh, on the first two releases basically the drummer his name is uh, tour on 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 the all is well ep he plays with the band called viagra boys uh and uh, he he basically had to adjust to everything that i've already done and when I did started to work on the serpents here, I wanted to do it the other way around. I wanted me to have to adjust to what was already there. So we recorded bass and drums, and there's a, a guy called Michael uh, who plays uh, bass, but I also played bass. So all through the album, there are two basses, like left, right, kind of. Uh, kind of disguised at times in the, in in the mix with you know some far out sounds and stuff but mm -hmm. so so we basically played um, two basses and drums live when we recorded the basic tracks and i didn't want any guitar or keyboards there because when the more chords and and stuff and if you talk about this is going to be the chorus or whatever the more people will adjust to that instead of just playing you know and I want it to be a really loose session. And and after that, I added keyboards, uh, guitars, and vocals on top of what we already had, so to speak. So I felt I felt it was really it was a little bit of a challenge, but that's what I like. And I think it came out really cool because there's a lots of um, there's a good live energy coming through all of of the tracks i think I, I think it sounds like a band playing even though it's it's mostly me so to speak with all the vocals and, and the other parts well i appreciate all the space and the dynamics on it and i find that's what makes the record really cool at times it's like the mood the space the dynamics yeah. the feel um what was one of the tracks i was making note of yeah like um he just disappeared is just yeah i really really dig that and um yeah, like I'm getting, you know, it's still a new record. I'm getting chills. This is cool. Um, but I wanted to ask you about the title track, The Serpents Here. Immediately, I felt a bit of um, a Jerry Cantrell kind of deal, a little bit of Alice in Chains vibe. Uh -huh. As far as not full on Alice, but maybe more of a Jerry solo deal. Would you say that that's, was that an accidental thing? Or are you a Jerry fan? I'm I'm a big Alice in Chains fan, and I like his solo work as well. But it was def uh, it's definitely not intentional, uh, so to speak. And I guess it just shows that depending on who's listening, you will discover different things. So when when that song was, it's it's a pretty straightforward song, except for the middle part, which is kind of 
an improv noisy thing come kind of an avant-garde part instead of putting a regular you know guitar solo in there I, it felt like it would add more tension to the track and and also when it comes back into the finale of the song it, it's it's even more of a you know um what do you call it it it, it feels uh, like it opens up way more than than it, if it would have been i don't know what to call it like a normal uh, guitar solo or something in there so uh i i don't know what i thought of when i'm when we when we recorded it i i just told the drummer to uh, like think of melvins you know <laughs> and, <laughs> no, think I, of... I think that's great though the way the way a band can yeah. You can incorporate that and yeah. be subtle and not be so blatant. It's not that, oh, I go, that's a full-on Alice in Chains song, but I, I hear something in there and kind yeah. of, huh, I wonder if that was, and, and that's cool to hear that because it's yeah, that was it's, pure, pure accident. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, uh, well, it, it's a good, uh, lucky accident, if so, I think, because that's uh, definitely a, a compliment in my world. So, um, Absolutely. Uh, now I will listen to it and see if I can <laughs> you see is see if I, I can hear some Alice in there as well. And so, I apologize if I wrecked it for you now. <laughs> oh no, absolutely <laughs> no, not. No, I no, just no. think it's fun. Yeah. Excellent. I, I think yeah. Um so there was a, a second well, is it a second? I guess since there's not gonna be a CD version, maybe this is only on digital, but what the the advance I received, there was instrumentals of the album too. Is that something that's going to be available? How, is that a digital thing, or or should I not even be talking about that? Um, I don't know if you should be talking about that. <laughs> well, the reason, no, I, I, I didn't know that they were going out uh, as as promo, so to speak. But I think it's it's a common thing that uh, labels do these days uh, because they you know they want to have instrumental tracks to to pitch uh, music for for tv games and whatever you know so so that's usually labels ask for instrumental versions of of the music and uh, sometimes when i've listened to the instrumentals myself it's it's kind of cool because i mean a voice is is maybe the most important instrument with any kind genre of music because it, it definitely kind of it, it sets the tone but when you take uh, and and gives it a certain feel and uh, um but when you take that away and just listen to instrumental versions of the music even if it's music that I've written it it becomes a completely different thing so it's 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 interesting uh, i think to hear to hear stuff like that well it's very interesting because when i first had ripped it and i was listening to the album and then okay yeah it was kind of done and then it's it started again but i didn't know because it was just kind of playing and i was doing stuff and i'm like i think i yeah. heard this song but where's the vocals and then oh yeah. okay <laughs> this is cool so i say i can get on board with this so there yeah, yeah. So um, we'll, I guess, I guess cool. we'll, we'll keep it quiet for now. Then we'll, we'll yeah, that, I doubt that they will be. I doubt that they will be released in any form. So, or maybe the extended, you know, pair box set, pair box set down the road, maybe. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> um, I, I, wa I wanted to go back to the EP for a second because when I was doing some digging, the all is well in the land, which is. Great as well. Yeah. I, need, I need physical of that. But I, there was a quote that was in the, um, the YouTube de description that uh, that kind of stood out to me, describing, I guess, maybe the release or yourself. I, I'm thinking more yourself. Um, sometimes reminiscent of the distant beauty of Stephen Wilson, sometimes of the industrial hypothermia of Nine Inch Nails, and sometimes of simply nothing that existed before him. How how does that sound to you? Does is that an accurate assessment? Um, I have no idea. To to the person that wrote it, I mm -hmm. hope. Um, um, I didn't write it, and and it's kind of weird. Um, 
when I read that, I didn't mind it. I think it, it's it's just it's it's an opinion of someone who listened to the music, you know, and and that's cool. Mm -hmm. And it's it's odd though because, uh, and and I don't absolutely don't mean to put uh, anything down, but I've never listened much to Stevens' work, you know, uh, uh, Stephen Wilson's uh, albums and. And Nine Inch Nails, I I like Nine Inch Nails, but it's it's not a band that I've been listening a lot to. But the music that I've heard with Nine Inch Nails, I, I like it, you know. But it, it's uh, neither of those are artists or or bands that I've I've listened a lot to actually. Uh, so it's interesting that those would be the comparisons, which is kind of cool. I mean, they're. They're extremely talented and, and, you know, both of those guys, if we're going to say Nine Inch Nails, is a guy. <laughs> it's a guy. <laughs> As in Reznor. So, Just and, a one inch nail, but, perhaps, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I don't mind it at all. It's just that it's it's maybe not music that I've listened so much to, if you know what I mean. Fair enough. Um, And then... With the album or previous albums, have you done any solo shows? Do you plan to do any touring at all, or 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 anything regionally? Like, have you done? I, I played a few. I played a few shows here um, in Sweden. Um, even last year, I even did um, um, an acoustic show where I played um, the songs on my own, but mostly with an acoustic guitar, and uh, that was. Uh, that was difficult. Mm. I've I've never done. I've never done that uh, style of performance on my own before. I've done acoustic shows with several bands that I've played with through the years, but I've never done done it on my own. I was scared to death when I was gonna do it. <laughs> but but it it, it was. Uh, I think it was. Um, healthy to do it and you also get to view your music from a different uh, angle so to speak and it's it's kind of cool to even if it's music that you wrote yourself it's kind of cool to try to find the essence of the song when you just have an acoustic guitar and uh, and go with it so and i would like to do it some some more in the future um but it, it was very it, it was not easy when when I started to rehearse for it, and I was just thinking, "How is this going to go then?" <laughs> so, but um, first and foremost, I will I will try to play uh, play the music with the band, of course, and yeah. So, anything in the works? I, I hope. So. Like, do you have anything? Uh, sorry, planned? do you have anything tentatively planned as far as doing any solo shows going, or uh, a few gigs here at home in Sweden? Um, I think, I mean, if, if I would decide, uh, I would love to play anywhere, anytime. And, uh, but realistically it's going to be at home here in Sweden and I will try to find, uh, some stuff, uh, in, in Europe as well. It's unfortunately kind of tough to get over to North America, uh, as a, you know, small yeah. independent artist. Uh, it's it's both uh, costly and uh, and kind of difficult these days with the work visa situation and everything as well. So so I'm, I'll I'll start with trying to to get some stuff going here and um, and take it from there. When I started doing uh, the the solo stuff, I didn't even know if I wanted to play live on it. Um, Usually, that's always the goal and the ambition with all the bands that I've been part of or, or, or played with. But with this, it was more like an outlet to start with. But then after a while, I felt like I should I should definitely give it a try. And then I played um, a few gigs here and there, and, and um, I liked it. I think it's it's good fun. And, and the guys that have played with me, they're awesome. So it, it's it's great. So that's encouraging. Well, if, if the planets are aligned, I'm, I may be in Sweden in for a 
few days or so in mid June. So, you know, if you need to do something impromptu, I'll be, I'll be hunting around. <laughs> you never know. You never know. And uh, it's uh, May and July as, uh, as of now. But you never know what's going to happen. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. I'll be following you. I'll be following you. Um, I wanted to go are back. Are you to... going? Hmm? Are you going to Sweden Rock or? Not going to Sweden Rock. Uh, no. no. Going. No. Okay. Tentatively going to um, Copenhagen and probably Gothenburg and maybe ah. somewhere else in Sweden, but we're we're not sure yet. We're just we have things almost nailed down, but that should be done pretty soon. So. Ah, okay. Cool. Yes. Maybe depending on your dates, you never know. We may have to reschedule stuff based on your solo shows. So, no pressure. I'll keep you in the loop. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Uh, but on the on the topic of touring, I wanted to bring this up because I was trying to remember if if you were in Opeth at the time of when, because before we started this interview, we talked about how we had um, when I had Scrape Records. Yeah, you guys did a couple signings at my shop, which were great for uh, Ghost Reveries and Watershed, which were awesome. Um, you guys were phenomenal always. Now, when there was that brief time when um, Martin Lopez had left the band, and you guys had played in town during the um, kind of towards the end of the Deliverance Damnation run. Were you in the band when 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 Gene had played a couple of shows, Gene Hoagland? Because I wanted to talk to you about that if you were a part of that. Yes, I was. Yes, I thought yeah, you. I remember that. Yeah, because that, that was that. pretty funny. Because I, I remember Gene. It was so crazy because it was um, Gene and Michael walked in the store one day, and and this won't happen anymore because all the music is available and you can just get it whenever. But this is when you actually had to work a bit more for the music. This would be like two thousand what five six. Gene brings Michael. I think it's even earlier. Maybe four. Yeah, yeah, I think it was 2004. There you go, 2004. So they walk in the store because Gene needs to buy copies of Deliverance and Damnation to learn that day, I think it was. I'm like, what is this? And he's like, well, I knew you'd have copies. And I'm like, well, of course, but this is just bizarre that you're coming in to buy physical copies of, of, of Opeth records to learn that day. <laughs> like, what is this? like is, is is there is this spinal tap like what's going on here so how was that to be a part of that playing with gene it was uh well he he saved the band a few times actually he played uh with opus in 2005 as well on uh on a half of the tour uh but that particular occasion we start we were supposed to start a north american tour in canada and if i'm not mistaken i think the first the first date uh, we had was in calgary maybe or edmonton uh, it was not on the east coast at least i know that mm -hmm. and and lopez wasn't feeling well so he he couldn't come and we thought like uh, let's go for it anyway and see. And we talked to our our drum tech at the time. He's he's a totally okay uh, drummer. He said I can play the soft songs like the Damnation songs if you want me to, and 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 he did. So we played uh, we played the softer songs and then and then uh, we reached out to Gene uh, if he was available and and he would. Uh, do a couple of the heavier songs. So by the time we got to Vancouver, we were uh, supposed to play the Commodore Ballroom. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gene came to that to that show and we rehearsed. Um, I might be wrong on this. I'm, I'm pretty sure there are people who know it. <laughs> who know what, what I think. But I think it was uh, Demon of the Fall and uh, it was a song from Blackwater Park. Um, I am not really sure which one it was, but was it the title track or no? No, it was not the title track. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll, we'll get the key to correct us. You do. Yeah. I I do have a copy handy. Let's see here. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, just, I just need to reach a bit, but oh no, was it was it bleak? No, drapery. We talked that. <clears throat> it was. It was not bleak. It. It was. Wasn't harvest. No. Funeral portrait. It was. Partners in the ivy, and not the the leper affinity. I was going to say it was the leper affinity. Well, maybe, maybe it was. It okay, we'll go. We'll go searching for bootlegs after. I'm yeah, sure. I'm sure there's video of it somewhere. <laughs> no, but it 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 doesn't matter really. But it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, time flies. It's twenty years ago today, but um, it was incredibly helpful, uh, uh, like from Dean to. Help help us out and and uh, and also it became a fun evening from something that wasn't so fun to start with so to speak when you know obviously you want to go as a full band and do whatever you're supposed to do but so our uh, drum tech Damon uh, he he played the damnation songs and then Gene came out to do a couple of the heavier ones and I think yeah, I think it became a really cool evening in the end, anyway, and I hope people had a had a cool cool time, you know. Well, it was something very special and unique, and yeah, it won't be redone. Yeah, exactly. and it's just it's an, an honest, pure moment. It was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Uh, two last things before we go. I wanted to ask you. I I saw a couple of weeks ago you posted your favorite picks of 2023, which is always awesome to look at people's lists. Can you single out? A few things that maybe a person should, if they're going to prioritize a couple things in your list, anything jump out immediately? It's difficult because it depends on I'm I'm all over the place when it comes to genres and stuff. Um, um I think a guy like uh, David Eugene Edwards, who used to be in Sixteen Horsepower and had another band called Woven Hand. His uh, his album is fantastic. It's very moody and uh, dark. Uh, and But he's just one of those people that is he's got a very charismatic uh, persona. And and it doesn't matter if it's only an acoustic guitar. Uh, he, he's the type of person that can carry stuff like that. Because uh, he's... Um, yeah, he... he I, I really like that album. Um, um, I don't. I don't know what you would categorize that kind of music. I mean, if let's call it singer songwriter, then, but it's it's very dark and moody. Uh, it's definitely not your average Americana type of stuff. Um, um, I like that. I'll uh, I'll say a doom band that it's it's flying under the. Um, the radar for many people it's called tar pond which was started by uh, martin uh, forgive my pronunciation martin ain from uh, celtic frost and uh, uh, a dude uh, from coroner and unfortunately martin passed, uh, passed away so i guess that kind of um ruined that whole band in a sense but they they they've done two two albums and uh and the first one i might be wrong but i think martin was on the first one but it was released way later after his passing but those are both albums are to me incredible like uh, doom albums um clean vocals um yeah. so it's not like extreme like uh, doom with death metal vocals, mm -hmm. but it's 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 got a great vibe to it. Uh, I like that. Um, I like those, and it's I'm I'm kind of surprised that they haven't been getting more recognition within that scene either. Actually, mm. uh, and I don't know how much <clears throat> gigs they played either, so I, I wouldn't know, but. Those two albums, uh, or or the latest, are well worth uh, checking out. I would say. Um, there's, um, I I try to put stuff that no, 
no re-releases and so on, but you know, sometimes uh, old recordings, but have haven't been released before. And obviously, there's a right. there's a live album with John, John Coltrane and Eric Dolphy, which is amazing because because they are or were. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's there's nothing to debate there. It, yeah, it's just no. like it's 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 fantastic stuff. Um, I would say uh, what else uh, it's I got some I listen to to a lot of different music and it's it's ranges from hip hop to death metal and avant garde and it to to pop you know so it's it's quite diverse I guess um variety is important it's so important I feel yeah, for anybody um, who's really stuck in that narrow like I just listened to Doom. That's it. It's like, yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, but I wanted so, to ask this too. Yeah. How did, you, how did you get involved in that? This is a very cool record. Helga. It is. Uh, yeah. it's, it's a new uh, new band, um, Swedish and uh, uh, British um, Swedish singer and uh, a british band if i'm not mistaken and uh, i a lot of times i do layout work and graphic work for bands and um, that particular album is on a label called seasons of mist and i've done layout for for uh, quite a few of releases on seasons of mist actually so that's kind of a freelance thing that i do posters and merch and, and the album layout so um they they asked if i could help out with doing the layout for their album it's a it's a, an amazing illustrator yeah. that oh, done it's a, the it's, it's really nice digital book like i, I hate yeah i don't want to wreck the crack that crack sounds just wonderful <laughs> but yeah yeah <laughs> booklet that's why physical products yeah, it's, are important, people. It's quite an extensive booklet, 36 pages. And uh, yeah. No, that's, th cool. uh, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And and uh, and and good good band as well. A little bit hard to categorize, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I think that's also, why I like it. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 kind of dark but melodic and it's cool because they have songs in swedish and english as well um which is uh it it's that's pretty interesting because when i grew up you never thought that you would be able to to sort of uh, uh get get your music out there if you didn't sing in english you know uh to sing in Swedish, especially if it was heavier music like metal or heavy rock or punk or hardcore or whatever, it, it it's like was um if you would sing in Swedish, you you kind of knew that okay, so we're not going to play anything out outside of Sweden, then, you know. Mm. But these days, um, in in several different genres, I think it's cool that people sing in their native language and which. And and it just shows that music is a universal language, you know, which is really, really cool, I think. Very good. Okay, well, one last sort of question. Us uh, the beggars. Anything going on? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> Michael's too busy and he won't he won't return your calls. <laughs> Funnily enough, I've been on the phone with him for a couple of hours today. Oh so okay. it was it was quite yeah, it was quite a while since we we talked, so we had a good time just chatting away. Uh, we don't have any plans for uh, beggars. Um, every everyone in in that band they have their own stuff, uh, so to speak. Uh, Ludwig plays drums. He's uh, in a Swedish band called Grand Magus as well, and they're also about to release a new album this year. And um, Michael is obviously busy with Arch Enemy and their recording. So uh, um, I, I I don't know an, uh, a release date, so I can't 
you know, say okay. anything about it. So say about uh, I do. Oh, oh, the the ground you're talking. Uh, I uh, well I uh, no um I don't know when Grand Magus Grand Magus is probably coming out September maybe okay that's, that's uh, yeah and, and I do know that Arch Enemy has quite a lot of touring plans so I'm just taking a guess here and saying that their new album will be out in the fall as well so so we may or and, may uh, another spiritual at some point. I don't know. Um, it's we haven't said anything about it really. It's it's not that we're not friends anymore because we definitely are. It, it's just one of those things that I think it's also the type of music and the type of band that if we all had time on our hands and the uh, you know the last to do something, we can because it's 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 a quick. Um, band to get together it's an easy band to work with if you know what i mean it's like uh, and we do enjoy each other's company a lot and so it, so it's an easy band in that respect but i think for now i think we've done as much as we can with that band but it's also one of those i've, I've lived long enough now to learn to say never say never you know yeah. and so i'm um, tell. it was the same yeah it was the same we had we had kind of a break after an album called demons because uh, as arch enemy was getting way more busy and and i was with opus at uh, at the time as well everyone was so busy so we did have a break then as well and we didn't say anything like you know let's start to do this again or whatever it just happens with that band uh now it's been quite a few years but who knows you know we'll watch out we'll keep our ears peeled yeah. but i'll wrap this yeah. up i want to say thank you so much for for again for taking the time today um please everyone get a copy of the serpents here on march 15th on despots records it's a seriously seriously dense moody brilliant brilliant record so make sure you support physical if you can i'm sure you'll still appreciate digital copies but yeah and go check out uh here's back catalog of solo material it is just crushing so thank you again for being a part of different stages radio and we'll hopefully have you again on some time okay thanks so much for having me it's it's a pleasure appreciate it